Harbor and the atomic destruction of Hiroshima, the Korean conflict, and the Vietnam War. But in 1971, it was WNBC that dropped a bomb on New York. Automatically sunshine, two creams of Jeannie Jarrell. My name is Simon Cinemoni, it is 8.54 at WNBC, 6 till 9, we're at 66 in New York. This just in, a submarine has been commandeered off the coast of Warsaw, and the hijacking has demanded... $500,000 and two parachutes. <laughs> Cleveland lost a legend, and New York gained the most unpredictable radio personality it had ever heard. But that was only the beginning. In 1973, the station really started to howl. <laughs> WNBC welcomed one of New York's premier radio personalities as he moved down the dial to 66. Hello, everybody. This is your cousin, Bruce e. I must say, a very, very excited cousin, Bruce e tonight. We have so many things happening here. It's the first time, I think, another 13 years of broadcasting. And I'm just so pleased. I am so proud to be with NBC. It is sort of a, a culmination of a career. Every guy, I think, in radio wants to be with those beautiful call letters. NBC. And from now on, every night, 6 to 10 o'clock, and on Saturday, 8 to midnight, your cousin Bruce will be here, and I'd like you to call your friends, talk to them, and tell them we're right here at Fantastic 66 NBC. Now, turn up NBC, let the world know where we are. And they will, I promise you, they will. Ladies and gentlemen, mark this down. The first record I'm to play here at NBC, my first choice. Wolfman Jack and Imus in the Morning did more than just play music. They continued the legacy of entertainment and memorable personality that have been the hallmark of WNBC Radio for 66 years. WNBC. It's seven minutes after seven or seven or seven in New York, and I have Imus in the Morning. When Wolfman Jack came to uh, NBC, he. Um, they got a big tombstone. Remember that? I sure do. Got a big yeah. tombstone. And it said, Here lies Cousin Bruce Morrow. Yeah. yeah. Here lies Cousin Brucey. And they took the tombstone and they trucked it over to down the street here, mm -hmm. Sixth Avenue, to the ABC building, and we stuck it up in front of ABC. Mm -hmm. Because Wolfman Jack was gonna be was on the same time Cousin Bruce was on. Yeah. W A A B C. And uh well something I don't know what happened. That Wolfman left, and Cousin Bruce came over, and what, what happened was Wolfman got fired, and Cousin Bruce took his job. That was it. It wasn't the the, to, the tombstone, ostensibly. The, the yeah. message was that Wolf was going to bury, right, and that did uh, not happen. The cuz that didn't happen. No. And so Wolfman, Jack, and Bruce never worked here together. Yeah, Wolf. Uh, Bruce took Wolf's job. And, um, that was kind of the way it went. Well, you know, it's the uh, a highlight of the Wolfman Jack years was when Wolfman Jack and uh, and me uh -huh. and uh, Robert W. Morgan did Monitor. <laughs> <laughs> New Year's Eve, we're up there at Monitor. Yeah. And we got a baggie full of cocaine on the... Uh, I'm not proud of this, but I'm just saying yeah. the facts. A big bag of cocaine on the... Done? No. Yeah. No, we didn't. And we. And long 
about midnight. <laughs> Around about midnight. That was, I think that was the night I was banned from Hurley's for life. <laughs> you know, Chet Huntley, they just, they just took Chet's picture down because he broke the, he broke the uh, picket line. But they told me I could never come back in there. Ever. And the monitor soon went the way of, uh, that was really the end of monitor when they heard me screaming about Jesus and Wolfman <laughs> howling. Yeah. Uh, it was the end of monitor. <laughs> remember, remember that, Morrison? <laughs> uh, but uh, Wolf is uh, still around and so is Cousin Bruce. <laughs> Certainly. And um, they're both pretty good guys. Particularly Bruce is a good guy. And Wolf is too. Oh, Wolf, I like Wolf. Wolf is very much kind of yeah. out there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So this is our, uh, this is the final show from, uh, we, didn't, we didn't plan anything because of, I don't Well, we're not going because, anywhere. No, I mean, you flip on the radio on Monday morning and here we are. But there are going to be a lot of people we're not going to work with. And on a serious note, I do like everyone here at the radio station. I particularly like, uh, not you. Thank you. I particularly like Roz. We're going to make Roz. Very much. Yeah. She's very, she's very bright and very funny and very nice. Thank and, uh, I'm really going to miss you. And I wish, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry you're not uh, coming with us, okay. uh, but um, we're going to get over it. You know what else I am? What? I'm very hungry. I was thinking like maybe one of your big deal advertisers would send up breakfast or something. Hey, good idea, Ron. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pick up anything on the way in. I offered it. Why, but there'll be bagels well, and donuts. Well, maybe I can think of something here you could eat. What do you think that could be? Well, Bernard, can't we go upstairs? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rather banana or something. Yeah. So we were over at the uh, Coffin Studios yesterday. Did you see the Bill Cosby office there? Yeah. We may be, maybe we'll be able to be on the Bill Cosby show. You know, I saw him last night on that Carson thing. Yeah. Doing this monologue, Bill Cosby, doing this monologue about uh, buying eyeglasses. Yeah. He got, he got trifocals. Right. <laughs> Mr. Marini, it's, it's hilarious. Very funny. Monologue, monologue, ghost. Can't say that. So, so if we can maybe suck up to him and get on his show? Probably, probably not, huh? A walk on? No, or a I walk don't. off? I don't know. So, we, so Charles, we're trying to find out where we can park our... Uh, Char, well, Charles is trying to find out where he can yeah. park his car. Right. Okay. So, now this is the program director, Gumby uh, Mason. And Gumby says, well, maybe you can... Uh, uh, Charles says, well, what time does the lot open out here? Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody says, well, I think they unlock it around 7, but I don't know if the guy gets there or not. That's, yeah. So it's that kind of arrangement thing. So then uh, Gumby says, well, maybe you can just uh, park it in front of the, in front here, <laughs> and maybe make a deal with one of the guards and get them to watch it. Wow. Oh. And, and, and then and he watches it for a while in front, and then around 7 o'clock he backs it up. Give him the key, and he'll pack it up and put it down that's the a, block. That's a great yeah. idea to give the key to one of the guards at the <laughs> Coffin Studios and do Corvette. And now, I understand this, 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 this lot is a couple of blocks. They're short blocks, but it's not full city blocks, but a couple blocks from the Kaufman Studios. And it has a, I noticed it had a 14-foot cyclone fence around it, topped with barbed wire yeah. and concertina wire. Nice and a nice sign nice. on the door that said... Guard dogs, <laughs> warn them. And they have rabies. <laughs> but, yeah. but my point right. is, this is the arrangements they make for you if you want to, if you happen to, you know, be on the Amazon morning program and you're going to be there early. That's, you know, I was, I was thinking about that though, Donald. Real, uh, honest, it's, it's honest, honestly, what do they do right now with personnel who work a, an early morning shift and who must? Yeah, well, drive there. well I, I, I don't think that I don't, oh, obviously, obviously they're not concerned about it. But, but they will be concerned about it. We, hmm. they'll, we'll work that out. <laughs> it is official. We are going to make the switch at 5.30 today. That's what I heard. So uh, that word came down yesterday from the FCC. It will be an exciting time. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. And uh, in the further effort to humiliate me, <laughs> you know, I will be at studio at, uh, studio at Gate C. Right. We're about done. In the parking lot at Shea Stadium. Uh huh. With Pete Franklin today. His Pete counts it down. Yeah. And uh, hey, all right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. And if you have. <laughs> well, we thought your drive over to Queens was pathetic. <laughs> well, 
Well, what can I tell you? Are you going to be giving things like little, like, uh, <laughs> stickers out? And stuff? <laughs> and and uh, WFAN banners and, uh, come on, I don't know. I, I just don't know. It's just a nightmare. That's but, exciting. uh, but, um. And if you don't have a ticket, you should go out, right? You yeah, go. yeah, yeah, you know, you should drive out at 5 o'clock here on Friday. You should drive out to Shea Stadium. <laughs> stand around there in the parking lot with Pete and I. <laughs> and then, then, then go home. Then just go home. 14 after 7, I'm this morning. I'm here now with the latest from the WNBC Traffic and Transit Network. There's not like a little barbecue afterwards or something? I'll like put a little grill out in the parking lot? I want you to shut up. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. not in a great mood today. <laughs> you look like that. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Do the cars. Okay. Here's what's happening. <laughs> if you are traveling in from New Jersey, the in Van Lincoln and Holland averaging about 15 minutes delay. The George Washington Bridge only about a 10 minute delay, but on the upper level, Shadowhead reported going over to New Jersey, there was a tie up on the uh, span, and that was making traffic heavy because the tie up's going to westbound 46, and two lanes are closed, and that is on the upper level over to New Jersey. If you're traveling New Jersey Transit, expect scattered delays on the Morristown line. That's due to overhead wire trouble, uh, bus service being provided between Summit and Murray Hill. Westbound cross front slow from the Bruckner Interchange to third. Eastbound a little heavy approaching Webster. We had a stall there in the right hand lane. Westbound Grand Central normally heavy by LaGuardia. Westbound L I normally heavy towards the tank. Alternate side in effect in all five boroughs. More traffic and transit shortly on WNBC. Uh, Paul Bunyan. Uh, you want to step to your left a couple feet? Thanks. I guess all this tree chopping really works up an appetite, huh, big guy? Radio. In fact, right after I level Wisconsin here, I'm going to drop by the International House of Pancakes for breakfast. For pancakes? For the whole menu. Oh. Six or seven of those big International House of Pancakes three egg omelets. Ah. Dr. and I am Mr. Morning. What are we going to do? Are you coming out there Monday? Because Brant said he would be happy to come pick you up after the uh, NBC News at Sunrise and bring you over to it. Well, yeah, Bernie and I are having a meeting very shortly here. Oh, you are? We call it a logistics meeting. Yeah. Can, <laughs> can you dig it? Yes, Don. <laughs> Super. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so this is our, you know, we've been coming. I started in this very studio 17 years ago. You used to slap on a long version of American Pie and maybe take a nap on the floor occasionally? Okay. Not in those days. I was pretty good shape. Oh, no, in the early days. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was in this other studio here we used to. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The, uh, the 70s, I was okay. Yeah. It was uh, in the of two or three years in the 80s. With them missed those 80s. So, well, I didn't miss all of them. <laughs> Obviously not. But no. I, I remember some. some of them. There simply were some lapses. Yeah. You say, Don? Uh, basically. Yeah. yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. Momentary sinking spells. That's all. That's all. We had a 22-minute version of Hey Jude. <laughs> we looped the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> looped the really? end. Yeah, just made it, just made it, da, 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 da. I just went on for 22 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, Five it's minutes. 18 after uh, 7, <laughs> and the great Don Crookie is uh, here. Who? Crookie. What did I say? Cookie. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> cookie, cookie. <laughs> no. Don Crookie. So, well, good morning, Don. Good morning, boss. Good to see you again, pal. <laughs> the Oakland A's and the Boston Red Sox have played 14 times this year. Oakland has won 11, and the A's are headed for the World Series. They won again last night at Boston, 4-3 to three to take command of the American League playoffs, two games to none. And now the series moves to Oakland, where the Red Sox were futile this season. In fact, the Red Sox have only won once in their last 15 games at Oakland. Last night, big Jose Canseco hit a two-run homer for Oakland that tied the game two all in the seventh. Walt Weiss, that little shortstop, drove in the game-winning run in the ninth for the A's. Weiss was just looking to get a piece of a Lee Smith fastball. Earlier in the game, I took a call third strike uh, against Clemens, and I didn't want to do the same thing in that situation, so I'm just telling myself to swing it anything close. Uh, it was a fastball, a little up, and I was able to get the good part of the bat on it. Tonight, the National League playoffs go to Game 3 at Shea. The Dodgers and Mets, as you know, tied at a win apiece. Ron Darling starts for New York. John Tudor, the longtime Cardinal, goes for the Dodgers. As you know also, he's pitched in many big games before. Does it make a difference? I've had playoff and World Series experience, and as far as I'm concerned, you can take it all and toss it out the window because it's not going to do me any good, you know, Friday. Uh, you know, there's no question the Mets are a good ball team, but, you know, they lost 60-something games, and uh, they can be beat. It's just, we just have to do it. They didn't lose 60-something games, moron. They lost 60 games. Yes, and they lost very few to the Dodgers, that we remember. Yeah, that's right, Tudor. 
Meanwhile, down the National Hockey League season open, the Rangers played to a two-all tie at Chicago. The Islanders in Calgary played in Western Canada. That ended in a four-all tie. The Philadelphia Flyers, who were unable to beat the Jersey Devils at all last season, open with a 4-1 to one win over New Jersey. And Wayne Gretzky debuted as an L.A. King. He had a goal and three assists as Los Angeles beat Detroit 8-2. to two. Now here is I Miss in the Morning. So what are you doing at 5 o'clock today? Let me tune into that big switch. Oh, you don't want to come out to the parking lot there at Shea with Well, heck yes. <laughs> I guess I do. 5 o'clock. I'll be at a parking lot. No, Gate C. What is it? Gate C. Gate C. Gate C. They're in the parking lot in front of Gate C. Yeah. And Pete Franklin and I. And uh, Pete's going to count it down. They're going to throw the switch at, at seven at 5.30 this afternoon. And you and Pete blow up good. Yeah. So that switch. The Reverend Hargis will be, uh, will be uh, on it at 5.30 today to bless this whole affair. <laughs> if they have the nerve enough to run it. Yeah. We'll find out. Where, we'll find out right away where management... It's coming from. Where well, this sure. wussy management from FAN is coming from. If once they get on 66 here, they, uh, they have any guts. Oh. Well, I think what Charles and I should tell that management the best way to deal with Imus in the morning. You don't ask him to do something, you tell him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, Charles? That's exactly, that's exactly right. right. Imus, this is the way it is, pal, and this is how you do it. <laughs> and you dig it. Yeah. And if you and can't... I tell you, he's like a, he's like a puppy then. Yes, he is. <laughs> Meek. Meek and mild. Yeah. Unbelievable. How cooperative you'll get. Uh, attention, MS Broadcasting. <laughs> Welcome to Radio Hell. <laughs> <laughs> the WNBC weather. Variably cloudy and cool today. The high in the mid-50s. Continued partly cloudy and cool tonight, the low in the low 40s. Mostly sunny and chilly tomorrow. The high in the low 50s. Chill out. The outlook for Sunday, partly cloudy and you cool. shut up. At the moment, it's 48 degrees, boss. And at 722, that's what's happening. I'm Charles McCord, WNBC New York. Oh, I'm so, I, I didn't see that you were eating. I'm That's sorry. That's quite all right. I didn't know you had a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming up at 723, 23 after uh, 7 o'clock. So this this woman who, because you're not coming to FAN with us, uh -huh. there's another woman who's going to be working with us. Lisa, what's her name, Charles? Uh, Lisa, Lisa. Lisa, Lisa. Uh-huh. And so she asked Charles. She's, she's very nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, very... Very attractive. Uh huh. Very attractive. Yeah. And she says, "Well, does Don?" Uh, she asked Charles if I was if I felt bad about you not being mm -hmm. there, and if I was going to miss you. And Charles says, "No, mm -hmm. he doesn't care about anybody. He cares about himself." That's true. That's more than true. But I am going to miss you. I'm going to miss you also. So, but the fact that you won't be doing the cars it is it's mean anything to me. No, it does. I am going to miss you. I wish you. Thank you. I'm going to miss you too. But uh, I, I can tell you just right now that mm -hmm. that uh, I am uh, very up about this other woman. So. I do, I think you, you should be. You should so. go with wonderful expectations in a new job. I have tremendous expectations. I think I'm, that's the way it should be. Unfortunately, she probably won't. She probably doesn't have the same expectations. She probably thinks she's just going to be working on a program, which is what she will be mm -hmm. doing. But mm -hmm. we will what be. else will be expected of her, other than working on the program? Well, nothing's expected of her. Right, right, Bernard? No. Well, she is cute, isn't she? Yeah, she's attractive. Yeah. And I love her. <laughs> <laughs> no, she is. Anyway, I'm going to miss you. Let's, uh, this is the end of this. I, I, go, I don't like these. I don't like goodbyes. I don't, I like don't these either. Old, I don't like these emotional deals because I'm, you know, I'm so buttoned up emotionally that, that um, uh, I just don't need to deal with it. And in fact, it was, that, was the, that was the worst part of being in rehab. But see, you had to deal with all that stuff, and they, they, you know, they just make you deal with it. Yeah. So, which I did, but I didn't enjoy it. Well. But I'm, but I'm glad I did. I just wanted to get into a big emotional thing here, uh, because you know. But I do like you a lot. I like you a lot. And I think. Uh, thank I, you very much. It's been a great fun working. I've had I, a I, terrific time. I thank you, and I think you're terrific. I really do. Thank you. I like no, you a lot. I see. I really. I'm not good at that either. I'm not a really emotional person at no. all. Uh, but it, when I do get emotional, I really get emotional. Mm. Feel it come on now. So, uh, I don't think I can do the cars. I think you can do the cars. I don't think I can. Suck it up and do the cars. Okay. If you're, <laughs> <laughs> if you're traveling in Mountainside, New Jersey. By the way. Yes.
if you change your mind yes. and you want to come out uh -huh. and do the cars, uh -huh. the answer is no. <laughs> You had your chance. Yes, I did. You blew it. Yes, I did. All right, Thank you. Here's what's happening. Westbound Route 22 closed between New Providence Road and Lawrence Avenue. That due to a two-car accident, local detours are in place. And we'll have more traffic and transit shortly on WNBC. <laughs> yesterday? Eddie Moyer. All right. Eddie Moyer is, uh, I like Eddie. Eddie's a, sal Eddie's a sales manager for K-Rock. Yeah. How appropriate that Eddie would sell Howard Stern. Eddie being a pig. <laughs> I like Eddie. Eddie's the most obnoxious drunk I've ever, he's, Eddie drunk is more obnoxious than I was. That's pretty bad. But in, a, in an effort to call attention to how fat he is, he has an earring now. Have you seen the earring? No. Yeah. Anyway, Eddie was up yesterday because he used to work here. It's great to see Eddie. Just thank God he wasn't drinking. Eddie's really a treat at a party when he gets drunk and wants to kiss you on the mouth. That's his act. Ah. Ah, he's just a, he's a pig. After 30 years in West A Street, the stag shop, New York's legendary uh, men's clothier featuring better Italian and French-style men's apparel faces the need for an agonizing decision. They've raised the rent on them. They have to get rid of this stuff, so they haven't decided exactly what they're going to do. So I guess they're sort of trying to cover themselves in case, they, in case they're lying about this and they're just having a sale. But uh, anyway, they are having a sale, 50% off on everything they have. Suits and overcoats and raincoats and sport coats and denim jackets and slacks and leathers and shoes and shirts and imported silk ties and furnishings and stuff. And uh, some of Europe's top labels as well. The entire stock is uh, priced at much as, uh, off as much as 50%. <laughs> I, I don't know. Anyway, suits that originally were 350 bucks are now $175. $65 Italian sweaters for $32.50. Slacks, uh, they were $95, are now $47.50. So, uh, check it out. The Stag Shop, 43 West 8th Street, between 5th and 6th. They'll take American Express Visa and MasterCard over Monday through Saturday, 11 to 8, and Sunday, 12 to 6. Item, four months ago, the cost of living plummeted in Middle Village, Queens. Item, three months ago, the cost of living fell dramatically in Spring Valley, New York. And now in North Brunswick, New Jersey, the cost of living has just reached an all-time low. Why now? What's going on? What's happening to reduce the cost of living? Simple. In each of those places, Pergament has opened up a giant new home center offering the lowest prices on everything for your home. The cost of lighting your home just fell because Pergament is running a giant sale on every GE light bulb in their stores. Four-foot fluorescent tubes, just 98 cents after rebate. And three-way bulbs for just $1.59. Soft light bulbs for only 54 cents. And outdoor floodlights for just $2.99. Nobody but nobody beats these prices on GE light bulbs. So check out our ads and circulars. Then come in for our giant sale. And you'll shop with confidence, knowing that at Pergament you get everything for your home at the lowest prices. Guaranteed. Dunkin' Donuts would like to invite everyone who really loves our coffee to experience it once again. Only this time in a very different way. Through your ears. We start by picking only premium coffee beans that are shipped in and freshly ground in each Dunkin' Donut shop just before brewing to release all the full, rich coffee flavor. Dunkin' Donuts regular coffee and Dunkin' Decaf are both always fresh because they're brewed every few minutes. And any coffee that sits too long for our taste, we pour down the drain. So for a cup of the finest coffee you can buy served with real cream, come to Dunkin' Donuts. Especially if you are on your way to get coffee that simply isn't as good as ours. Dunkin' Donuts, our coffee alone is worth the trip. Now at participating Dunkin' Donuts shops, get our delicious fresh ground coffee by the pound and enjoy our famous blend of regular or decaffeinated coffee at home or at work. It's coming up on 7.30. I'm in the morning, WNBC weather. Cloudy and cool today, high in the mid-50s. Continue partly cloudy and cool tonight, low in the 40s. 48 now, going up in the mid-50s. This is news from...
from 66 WNBC, New York. I'm Charles McCord. Here's what's happening at 7.30. Dan Quayle may be the number two man on the GOP ticket, but he is certainly getting the lion's share of attention in recent days. NBC's Dennis Murphy reports the attention focused on Quayle is not all welcome and much is not at all flattering. Quayle campaigning here in Missouri may be a problem again for Bush. Several instant polls and surveys show Quayle not only the debate loser, many viewers apparently were not assured by his answers on what he would do if he became president. Quayle said he didn't expect the question. Arkansas, Bush's often unmentioned running mate, was back in the stump speech. He has been unfairly pounded by my opponent. Lee Atwater, Bush's campaign manager in the jargon of spinner, made a rare appearance on the press charter. The race is between two men for president. The inordinate amount of time that staffers spent talking about Quayle on Thursday indicates he's still heavy baggage. Dennis Murphy, NBC News, with the Bush campaign in Little Rock. Michael Dukakis's campaign believes it could win some closed states because of voter concern about Senator Quayle, the Republican vice presidential contender likely to be target again today as Dukakis campaigns in two closed states, North Carolina and Missouri. Unregistered New Jerseyans who want to vote in next month's presidential election have until Tuesday to register. South Korea, Don? Well, thanks, Don, but we're no longer in Seoul. <laughs> no? No, the Olympics are over. Oh, well, where are you? We're in Washington. <laughs> And among those other stories we're working on here, what an idiot. in the IMIS in Washington network newsroom, mm -hmm. hard on the heels of the observation by Senator Lloyd Benson that Dan Quayle is no Jack Kennedy, campaign observers have identified a list of other people who <laughs> fall into the same category. <laughs> it can now be reliably reported that in addition to not being Jack Kennedy, who after all is dead, Senator Quayle is also not... For the sake of argument, Johnny Cash. <laughs> Nor it can be argued, as he say, Tom Seaver. <laughs> or Prince, for that matter. Or James Ramsour. <laughs> Neither is Dan Quayle say Keith Richards, Keith Hernandez, or Elvis. <laughs> He's not Andre Agassi, or, or grab your smelly Slavoini. <laughs> Though he might be, come to think of it, Renee Richards. <laughs> <laughs> President Reagan laid the cornerstone on a $90 million museum in Washington and then, in a moment of confusion, laid the first lady. <laughs> to the dismay of officials attending the groundbreaking ceremony. <laughs> oh, Overseas, 78-year-old American doctor Stephen Prichard, who worked to rid China of venereal disease, has died in Peking of the clap. <laughs> Here in Washington, gay activists from around the country are gathering on Capitol Hill for a week of lobbying, rallies, and civil disorder, in which they threaten to enter the offices of congressmen and violently rearrange the furniture. <laughs> on the West Coast, yeah. authorities in Los Angeles today began an aerial spraying program hmm. to try to nip a possible new infestation of Mediterranean fruit flies. Hmm. To the north in San Francisco, uh -oh. here comes the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Authorities are concerned not so much about fruit flies, but rather they explain fruits flies. <laughs> which are known to cause an infection in humans whose symptoms include hovering several inches off the ground and talking like Rex Reed. <laughs> pretty good, Johnny. <laughs> Well, you wrote it. Of course it's pretty good. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> what a nut. It's 737, 23 to 8 o'clock. I am Ivan Sitter Morning. Uh, my friend Don Crickey, who uh, is going to do sports, is coming up. With us today is Professor Norbert Musk. Humbug. Sir, you've developed a method for resisting high-pressure sales techniques. I wouldn't pay a penny for anything you've got. And you claim you can resist even the most remarkable value. Nothing impresses me. Suppose you could have, say, the New York Times delivered to your home or office every day for 20 weeks for only $2.20 a week. Are you trying to sell me because it won't work? The Times is prize-winning coverage of world, national, and business news, Sports Monday, Science Times, Weekends... But 
not Sunday, right? <laughs> Sunday, too. Arts and Leisure, travel, the magazine. Wait a second, you are interested. No, I'm not. Just $2.20 a week for the first 20 weeks. That's almost half off the regular home delivery price. And it's for new subscribers only. Almost half off? Do you have their number? 1-800-631-2500. Slower. <laughs> 1-800-631-2500. You are interested. It's for a friend. Sure. That's it for today, folks. $2.20 a week? That's their best offer ever. Excuse me? No. Fine. Whatever you say. 7.38, 22 to 8 o'clock. I am... I miss it a morning, and it is official now. Uh, WFAM will switch over to uh, 66 on the dial today at 5.30. And so at 5.30, you will hear the Pete Franklin Show, or you would normally hear the Alan Combs Show. And I'll be out at Shea Stadium, right there by G Gate C in the parking lot. This is to be attended, this changeover is to be attended by, yes, great ceremony. Well, well, yeah, you will be in the parking lot of Shea Stadium, that's what I mean. And uh, you're all invited to come out and stand around, and of course you won't have a ticket for the game. No, but you can, you can come out and watch, or, or if I were you, what I would do would be to listen to it on the radio. But Mr. Franklin is in his own right a very, very funny, amusing, intelligent, uh, deep, knowledgeable, erudite, what, articulate what, what, fellow. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What? He is. Have you ever heard the Pete Franklin show? Huh. Oh, uh, no, you haven't, have you? Well... So you, maybe not. You, you but met, I know him by reputation. You met you met Pete Franklin yesterday, and what did he say to you? He told you he told you how much he enjoyed our program and how funny he thought we uh, were and that stuff. And so now he's your new best friend, isn't he? Well, he, he he's he's among new people who I have met, who I, 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 I admire greatly. You you are as transparent and superficial and shallow as I am, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, but so what? <laughs> we now love Pete Franklin. Well, uh, we? Yes, we do. Yeah. And uh, speaking of people who we uh, are attracted to, <laughs> here now with sports. Yeah, it's the great Don Crickey, and I emphasize, great. You wear? Do you wear eye makeup? Why do you keep saying that to me? Because somebody else asked me this. And if I do, does it make me a bad person? No. No, it doesn't. But but on television... No, I don't. No. Oh, okay. So you, but you just have very... Uh, he has... Attractive eyes. Yeah, he's handsome. <laughs> he is handsome. He's handsome and he has attractive eyes. You know what? He, he's, okay, he's, he's, you know what he looks like? Oh, quite frankly, no. like one of those guys in a in a in a shirt and like an arrow shirt ad. You know? That's right. You do. You look yeah. right. Really. You ought to be the guy or or the the, the guy with the with the pa the Hathaway shirt. The Hathaway You'd Hathaway be great shirt. for the Hathaway. You really would. Have they ever asked you to do? You almost look like that guy in the Hathaway shirt ad. Have they ever approached you Come seriously? On, boss. Come on. <laughs> Have they ever talked to you about that? No, I haven't. <clears throat> Man, they're making a mistake. Yeah. Well, no, we, I'm think serious. We, we think this FAN movie is going to be good on a number of levels. Yes. One will actually be working for a radio station, and two, there will be some, there will be a lot of commercial tie-ins done, and we're going to keep you in mind for this. Is that another watch you have there that you got in Seoul? No, no. Man, you... Are you hiding stuff from me, Don? 19 delayed. Here with sports now is Don Crickey. We'll find out about the watch in a minute. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Don. The National Hockey League season opened last night, the 72nd. We had two draws and a loss among the, uh, the locals. Yeah. The Rangers went out there to Chicago, played to a two-all tie. Islanders went to Calgary, played to a four-all tie. Jersey Devils went to Philadelphia and were beaten by the Flyers 4-1. to one. The most focused on game of the night was at the L.A. Forum, where the Kings debuted with Wayne Gretzky in their lineup. The great one scored a first period goal, later assisted on three other scores as Los Angeles routed Detroit 8-2. to two. Even for the great Gretzky, his debut in Los Angeles was exciting. I've been in a lot of key games and pressure situations. I think you learn how to control your emotions. And yet this game itself was so exciting and so much fun that I was really pumped up. The Oakland A's and the Boston Red Sox have played 14 times so far this year, and Oakland has won 11, including a 4-3 victory at Fenway last night. 
Jose Canseco with the A's down two to nothing, ripped a two run home run in the seventh inning to tie the game. The winning run came in in the ninth when Walt Weiss, the little shortstop, drove one up the middle and that brought in the winning run. Four to three, Oakland wins. Oakland leads the series two games to none. And now they go to Oakland, California, where the Red Sox have won just once in their last 15 games at Oakland's Alameda County Coliseum. Tonight, the National League playoffs resume at Shea. Mets against the Dodgers. They're even at a victory apiece. Ron Darling starts for New York. Here's John Tudor, who goes for Los Angeles. The two big guys in the lineup, Hernandez and Strawberry, are left-handed, but both of them handled that very well against left-handed pitching, so I don't really see an advantage there. My uh, advantage will be is if, if I'm on my game, uh, I have enough confidence in myself and my own ability that I can get anybody out. Well, we hope he doesn't tonight. Oh, well, yes, we do. I'll be at that game tonight. I know you will. You'll be there at 5? I'll be there at 5 o'clock, yeah. So that switch, like, I do a Sing Sing. Yeah. Used to. <laughs> at one thirty today on 66, <laughs> as it remains WNBC until 5.30 today, when it right. becomes WFAN, uh, there's going to be what is being described as a farewell to WNBC with some of the radio personalities of the past, many of whom I worked with, Big Wilson, Bill Cullen, I worked with him. Cousin Bruce, I did work with him. Oogie Pringle, Victor with a V? No. Vernon with a V. Lee Leonard, Joe McCoy, worked with Joe. He's a program director at CBS FM now. Right. Gene Rayburn, I, I don't know. Ed McMahon. Well, you know, I've seen him on TV. Brad Crandall, Bob Pittman. Yeah. Uh, Marv Albert, Larry King, Bob Fitzsimmons. Buffalo Bob Smith, Wolfman Jack, and, and probably other people. Wow. I, I should have kept track. I, I suppose I, I, uh, I suppose I have a record somewhere of all of the disc jockeys who have worked here just since I've been here. It's well over a hundred. Well over a hundred. I, I suppose so, Donnie. I mean, there's been just, I can't tell you how many people have been here. But uh, Soupy will not, uh, they're not, uh, Soupy will not be here today. You can't be sure. Well, he's not on the list. So. We might segue right to the Soupster today they, before we're done. They, they've turned their back on the Soupster, so. Okay. How about Joey? Joey, no. Joey's not on the list yet. <laughs> Ogie Pringle's not on the list. Bernie with a V is not on the list. The Stern man? Howard Stern, he's not on the list. Hmm. Johnny Dark? Johnny Dark, he's not on the list. Norman Knight? He's not on the list. Why? I don't know. Maybe he is on the list. Murray the K? Murray the K? Well, Murray's dead. <laughs> Who said Murray the K? <laughs> Idiot. Scad. It's 745. 15th delay. So I would listen to the I would listen to the radio all day today. Why not? <clears throat> and then we'll uh, And we'll be in we're in Studio B this morning. Mm -hmm. Well, we started, and we'll be in Studio F Monday morning. And it's for Studio F, or where we finish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Charles and I were out there yesterday. Yes, we were. It's a nice place, to be quite frank. The only th first thing we did was get the headphone level up so I could hear it. Yeah. And the monitor level. Right. Jack had monitor up. Harry's holding his head. He's saying, what's the matter, Harry? Unbelievable. The, yeah. the tradition continues. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yes, this continues. Yeah. <laughs> gotta hear that rock and roll. So they gotta hear that rock and roll, man. Get that monitor up. <laughs> it's not loud enough. I can't hear it. <laughs> I don't want those headphones blasting. <laughs> You're, you've already made yourself half deaf. Huh? You're half wit. One. <laughs> and the correct man. Yeah. We've made arrangements for you to get over there. We've got the big limo for you to come over if you want. If you want to come over. <laughs> Pretty, it's actually a pretty nice place. You could get on that Cosby show. Sure. We saw a couple of big movie trucks there yesterday. Oh, the Cosby uh, studio's right there? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Right in the same building. As you walk in, there's a Cosby office. Oh, this is big time. It's yeah. going to be a hot stop then. Sure it Story. is. Yeah, this could be a big deal for us. Story is coming back. Yeah. And Maddie Troy will be our special guest Monday morning. That's right. Because we want to know, our, we, we want to learn... We want, to, we want to know if there are any shortcuts to things that we need to get done in Queens. And we figure we'll go right to the source. Former Queens Democratic County Leader. Right. Former member of the City Council, right? Member of the New York City Council. Now the uh, head of the Long Island Gasoline Retailers Association, with which he's been affiliated for a good number of years now. Matty Troy, I'm a man, Matty. <laughs> You want to ease over to that Hunt and Fish Club for a little lunch after the Honest the Morning Show. Oh. You know, we called the Bergen Hunt and Fish Club. We invited uh, John Gotti onto the program Monday, and uh, we have not uh, 
we've not been favored with a reply. Well, they just haven't responded as yet, that's all. That's right. So, but we're hoping. At 747.13 till 8 o'clock, we'll talk with Mr. T here in a moment, who I have not told, by the way, that we are moving. You're kidding me. Studios, no. Pretty good violin? Maybe. So, we don't, we don't think he needs to know. All right, so he's well, coming up. The WNBC weather, very cloudy, cool day. The high in the mid-50s. Continued partly cloudy and cool tonight. The low in the low 40s. Mostly sunny and chilly tomorrow. The high in the low 50s. The outlook for Sunday, partly cloudy and cool. 48 degrees. What? We're just, some, we're just some nightmare. 48 degrees at 12 minutes till 8 o'clock. That, clock, that clock's ticking. <laughs> Wake me up when it's over. <laughs> I'm Charles McCord, WNBC New York. <laughs> hey, how you doing, slime face? Oh, good morning, Mr. D. Guess what? What? You ain't gonna believe this. What? I heard you was leaving 30 Rockefeller Plaza. What? Can you imagine that? <laughs> no. So tell me, is you moving or anything? Why, uh, 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 no, Mr. T, no, we're not... <laughs> Great, I knew it was phony. I mean, yeah. I even read that you was going to Queens. Oh. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Pretty funny, huh? Yeah, Mr. T. So I guess I'll see you Monday morning, right, huh? Yeah, Mr. T, just, uh, you come in to, uh... We'll see you here Monday morning, right at, right here at 30 Rock. Right at 30 Rock, huh? Right. Well, and we'll go to lunch just like always, right? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and we'll hang out, work on the show, drink coffee, back in your office, right? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> at 30 Rockefeller Plaza, right? <laughs> well, yes, Mr. T. So you ain't moving or anything, right? <laughs> no, Mr. T. We'll be right here at WNBC. <laughs> well, then, uh, you better tell the movers to put your stuff back in your office, you lying white bread sack of pig snot. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I'm here in your office. Is back here, and everything's in boxes, and this guy's loading us up on dollies. You ragged redneck, rump kissing ringworm. <laughs> Thought you could just slip out on me like what is the low, like snuck skunk butt that you are, huh? You want to back up, and take that again? No, I can't. I'm too mad. <laughs> well, what are you up to? Butt. Well, you the dumbest white man in America. Well, I don't think so. Ah, uh, well, I know so. Well, of course, because you're too stupid to think so. <laughs> First off, thinking I wouldn't know you was moving to Queens. No. Yeah. Please. Although I does have to admit that. Getting George Maxey to put in his column was a stroke of genius. As soon as I saw it, I figured you was never leaving NBC. <laughs> and another thing, Spaghetti Head. Yeah. You shouldn't have no trouble adjusting to your new workplace. Uh, well? The way your sex life been going, you already spending a lot of time in Queens. <laughs> and you worked in a uranium mine, so you're used to working in a hole in the ground. Yeah. And I know how much you love getting out of the office. So maybe uh, WFAN can set up a whole bunch of these here look-alike contests for you. <laughs> Come to think of it, you got a good shot at winning a look-alike contest yourself. <laughs> Which one would that be? Willie Nelson. <laughs> the Willie Nelson look-alike contest? Yeah, in fact, you like a composite of a whole bunch of celebrities. <laughs> you got the face of Willie, the body of Don Knotts, and the brains of Brian Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, let's not forget the personality of Godzilla. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome. You want to hear a poem, you lying sack of worms? <laughs> well, all right. NBC is FAN, now owned by the Emma's Group. Tune it up on 66 and you got alphabet soup. If you wonder what Amos will do with the money he'll be banking, some of that cash will be going to adult diapers for Pete Franklin. <laughs> adult diapers for Pete Franklin? Well, he's kind of tottering around out there, you know. I understand that. Yeah, drooling and bumping into the walls and stuff. Well, we'll see you Monday. Yeah, at 30 Rockefeller Plaza, right? <laughs> it's coming up on 751, 9 till 8. I'm in the morning, WNBC weather. Cloudy and cool today. High to mid 50, 48, mm -hmm. 90. Our Cuba the Car Show. Sponsored by, by Forbes uh, Magazine. <laughs> Here's a capitalist tool deal situation. Here's uh, Roz Frank. Good uh, morning, Miss Frank. Good morning, Mr. Imus. Here's what's happening now at 751. Mountainside, New Jersey, westbound 22, still closed at New Providence Road. That due to a serious accident involving a tractor trailer and a fuel spill. Eastbound is closed at Lawrence Avenue. Traffic is jammed for two miles in the area and local detours are set up. Transit Authority reporting no number one service between Chambers Street and 34th. That due to an accident involving a passenger. Southbound West Side Highway heavy from the George Washington Bridge to the 150s. And then again slow from the 70s down to 56. The east side heavy on the FDR Drive from the Triborough into the 60s. And southbound Deegan heavy from the 230s to the George Washington Bridge. More traffic and transit shortly on WNBC. Thanks, Rod. coming up on 752, 8 till 8. I miss in the morning. Boy, I'm glad you had time for lunch, Don. No problem, Bill. So what?
uh, where are you going to place your new image campaign? Well, you know, we definitely have to be in upscale books, but mm -hmm. there are so many of them. So what does your agency say? Ah, they just merge with somebody. They're too busy playing musical jobs to pay attention to me. I see. Excuse me, are you gentlemen ready to order now? Ah, I don't know. Uh, what do you suggest? Forbes. Is it fresh? Wait a minute, you said Forbes? Well, yeah, I couldn't help but overhear your problem. Well, yeah, but... If you want an upscale audience, you can't do better than Forbes. Wait a minute, how do you know? You're a waiter. Well, yeah, but I was a media buyer at Seymour Hype and Howe before we got the merged. Oh. Yeah. And Forbes is read by more corporate officers than either Business Week or Fortune. You hear that, Bill? Yeah, and Bill, nearly one of every three Forbes subscribers is a millionaire. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, and Forbes also happens to be the most cost-efficient of the three major business magazines for reaching top management. Ah, thanks for the tip. You're welcome. Say, why don't you send your resume back to see more hype and how yeah i think they may be interested really if they want to keep my account forbes capitalist tool 752 almost 753 um seven till eight o'clock i miss the morning and uh, good morning mike lubica hi don why are you hollering? Well, I'm calling from Los Angeles. No, you're not. Well, I promised you a playoff report from Los Angeles, and here it is. <laughs> well, I think David Cohn's column's going pretty well in the Daily News. That's one thing. Yeah. The other thing is, I, I think that Mets are going to be in big trouble in game two. Mike. Huh? We know that you're back oh. in uh, Connecticut. Done. Yeah. You're making the switch today, right? Yes, five thirty. Oh God! And 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 once again, you'll be working with Pete Franklin before the two of you take your act on the road. Is that right? Something like that. Uh huh. And you're going to be in the parking lot. <laughs> yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. You're moving. Wait, you're moving to Rockefeller Center. Right. And you and you're not going to be working out of a parking lot in Queens. <laughs> yes. At, at Shea Stadium, in front of Gate C. <laughs> yeah. And and this is this is a good career move for you? Well I I guess it is, yeah. It's better than yesterday. Oh, let me get something straight. You know when like you're doing the show like in December? <laughs> yeah. Isn't it gonna be cold out there? Well no no, we're just gonna be in the parking lot today, Mike. At five o'clock. At Shea Stadium. And you're gonna be like talking to and, sports fans and so on and so forth? No, I'm not. I mean, people are going to come up and say, you know, how do you think Coney will do in Game Five, stuff like that. I want to, I want to talk to you later. I have You're to. You're going to be in the parking lot. It's to today. I have to go now. Oh, okay, but okay, goodbye. <laughs> Pasha Petey Masters. The finest ultra-premium Pasha Petey. 